Good morning. It's day six, and we are in James chapter one, verses 19 through 21. I'm going to read them to you. I've written them in my journal, um, and I'm going to read them out loud to you, and then I'll share with you what I got out of my quiet time this morning. My dear brothers and sisters, understand this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger, for human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Therefore, ridding yourselves of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, humbly receive the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. These few verses have so many rich, rich truths in them. Excuse me. And the first thing that jumped out at me was the word understand. Kind of like, it's kind of like James is going, look at me, look at me. Last week, I was with my grandchildren in Fresno, and the six-year-old, there was a couple of times where I had to say to him, CJ, put your, look at me, look at me, and I would go, look at me, and I wanted to make eye contact with him, and James is saying, and it's interesting, he doesn't just say brothers, he says my brothers and sisters, he's speaking to everyone, and he says, understand this, it is a command, understand this, it means take note, pay attention, what I'm about to tell you is very, very important. Don't miss it. That's what James is saying. Don't miss what I'm about to write to you. And then he goes to what I call quick, slow, slow. He says, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. So I started asking myself, how do I listen? Are in, and you know, we listen in different ways. Um, we listen, sometimes we listen with the response already formulating in our mind, which means we're not really listening at all. Sometimes we listen thinking about something else, maybe what we're going to do next, maybe something that we haven't done. We're not really listening. How do we listen? When James says everyone should be quick to listen, what does that mean? I think it means that we need to put our focus on Jesus. We need to put our focus on the scriptures. Um, sometimes I'm even guilty of reading my scriptures quickly because I have a commitment to read my scriptures every day, or I have a commitment to, to read my scriptures so that I can uh, teach. And what James is saying is, take a deep breath, slow down. How do you listen? How do you listen? Think about that. How do you listen? And then he says, be quick to listen and then slow to speak. Listening sometimes is more important than speaking. And I think that, as I said a few seconds ago, it's there's a danger when we're listening and the response is already formulating on our tongue. So be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. So I always ask myself these questions. How do I listen? What am I speaking? Why am I angry? Am I angry? Why am I angry? So why is what is what is James trying to get across here? Well, I think what he's trying to get across here is is what we see in the next few scriptures. Because James goes on to say that human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Okay, now we know that anger, there's a thing called righteous anger. We saw in the scriptures, um, we could see in the scriptures, if we look and we see Jesus getting angry, in the temple and turning over tables and 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 yelling at the the people in the temple who were selling uh, sacrificial animals, and and yet there's an anger that's righteous, but most of the time anger is not righteous. Most of the time, anger does not accomplish what God is trying to get what what God wants, which is His righteousness. He wants us to be right with Him, and usually when our anger comes. I don't know about you, but it takes over my system. And then I become cons just like almost, it, it just takes over my mind and I become consumed with my anger. So um, when he says, slow to speak, uh, quick, to, quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger for human anger does not accomplish God's righteousness. Therefore, ridding yourselves of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent Humbly receive the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. 
What's planted in your heart? Yesterday we looked in John 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. He was in the beginning with God. And what God, what John is talking about in John 1 is Jesus being the Word. And here we see James saying, receive the implanted Word. When we receive Jesus, he takes over our heart. And you and I as Christians then have the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. So what's planted in your heart? The word, Jesus? And I think, I think the danger of getting angry sometimes is judging. And so just for a second, I want to just kind of redirect this for a minute and says, therefore rid yourselves of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent humbly receive the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. I think there's a danger when we start looking around at the people around us. It happened to me today. Somebody was sort of judging somebody else and it made me really, really uncomfortable because it's not our job to judge. Are you trying to judge for God? Are there times when you look at circumstances and you're trying to tell God, kind of like a tattling child, God already knows. We don't need to tell him. We don't need to spend any time on our knees or any time telling God about what somebody else is doing. We're in danger of judging for God. Are you trying to tell God how you should live? Are you trying to do your way into heaven? Because what James is saying here is rid yourself. He's like quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger for human anger accomplishes nothing, does not accomplish God's righteousness. Can't get to God through human anger. Therefore, rid yourselves of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent. See, we're we are sinful people and without God, without Jesus, without the salvation, without that relationship, we have no hope of being righteous. So I close out our te my, my teaching time and I kind of wrote this, it's almost like a little, I don't know, poem or something in, and it's sort of how I break down what I see James saying here. And at the end, I tell you how I titled this day and what I wrote on my post-it note. Open your ears, close your mouth, calm down. Let God deal with it. Clean out your minds, open your hearts, let the word in. Jesus is enough. Jesus is enough. I hope you enjoy your time in James uh, 1, 19 through 21. And I get to see you tomorrow uh, on Wednesday night as we come together for our first in-person session. Have a great Tuesday and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.